hi fashion lovers you are welcome to another interesting video in today's tutorial we are going to be learning how to make a jumpsuit just like what you're seeing on the screen i posted some different style and majority shows this style so this tutorial is going to be in two videos so this video is the pattern drafting of how to make this john suit so in this video you are going to learn how to cut a trouser how to make a symmetric top and how to make a bishop sleeve although my own bishop sleeve was not as full as the one we are working with because my fabric was small so i had to you know i, I had to make use of what i had so this is a very detailed tutorial on how to make john suit if you are interested don't forget to watch this video to the end trust me you are going to learn a whole lot and if you have any question don't forget to drop it on the comment section this tutorial is beginners friendly let's get started To get started, the first thing you're going to bear in mind is that we have three types of waist. We have the natural waistline, which is the high waist. We have the waist on the belly button and we have the low waist. For a John suit, it's advisable you use the high waist. You use the high waist. So if you are taking measurements of your John suit, please use the high waist. If you are going to use the low waist, make sure your top is long enough to get to the low waist so that by the time you are done sewing, you will not, you know, have issue of, you know, fitting your dress. So if you want me to do a detailed tutorial on how to take a jumpsuit measurement and trouser measurement, please leave a comment for me in the comment section and I'm, I'm going to attend to that. So another thing you need to know is how to take your crouch measurement. So from the waist, whatever waist you are using, which the high waist is advisable for um, John suit, you have to, you know, sit on a flat surface or on a stool and measure from the waist to touch the end of the chair or the stool you are sitting on. So that's how you take your measurement for crouch but if you want to see a detailed tutorial on measurement for trousers and john suit please leave a comment for me and i'm going to make the video after this one so the first thing we need to do i'm gonna be i'm gonna start by drafting the trouser parts so we're going to be drafting the trouser parts and i'm going to be listing the body measurements we'll be needing for the trouser parts i need the waist measurement the waist is 26 divided by 4 will give me 6.5 the hip i'm working with is 38 divided by 4 will give me 9.5 the nurse is the hip depth so the hip depth i'm working with is 9 inches and the crouch is 11.5 but because i want the crouch to be a bit free i'm going to be adding 1.5 inches so when you're making a jumpsuit in your your crouch you can add one inch to it so it's you know you it would you know get relaxed whatever your crouch is you add one inch or 1.5 inches to it for the front crouch extension you are going to divide your hip by 20 so the hip i'm working with is 38 inches divided by 20 is going to give me 1.9 approximately two inches so the front crouch extension is hip divided by 20 the back crouch extension is hip divided by 10 the back crouch extension hip divided by 10 which is 38 divided by 10 will give me 3.8 so the front crouch extension is two inches the back crouch extension is 3.8 inches so that's the basic things you need to note so these are the curve rulers you can use to get your trouser so you can use your french curve just use this part of the curve you can use your pants curve you can use your hip curve don't use the very curvy part you can use any of this curve part you can use hip you can use also your mask your pattern master did you see that so you can make use of any of them french curve pant curve hip curve or pattern master just any of your hip curve but don't make use of the very curvy parts 
So the next thing is that on the starting point line, I'm going to come down by 3 inches and roll a line. That would be my starting point. And the reason why I did that is because of the back extension. So I left 3 inches on the top of the pattern paper before starting. So from the starting point line now, we are going to mark from the waist to your hip. Hip, hip depth line which mine is 9 inches and the crouch which is 13 inches so whatever you measure as your crouch you can add one inch to it because it's a john suit if you are making a very free john suit you might need to add up to three inches to your normal crouch measurement so the next thing is to mark my hip uh, measurement which is um, that is one quarter of my hip which is 9.5 so this is the crouch or length length this is the hip this is the hip depth line did you see that and i've already measured uh one quarter of my hip measurement which is 9.5 hip divided by 4 9.5 the width of this is my hip divided by 4 this is the hip line the crouch line so the next thing is from the waist you measure from the waist to the knee which mine is 22 inches and from that point you measure to the length the length of my of the trouser i'm working with is 40 inches but i'm gonna be adding two inches extra because i want it to be a bit long too so i'm working with 42 now as the length and then two inches for the hemming allowance so i'm gonna go ahead and rule a line So this is the knee, this is the length and the sewing allowance of the 2 inches. So the next thing you want to do is to mark your front crouch extension which is 2 inches. So on the crouch line I will mark 2 inches which is my front crouch extension. Did you see? So that's my front crouch extension. And then the next thing is on the waistline towards the crouch, you want to come inward by one inch, um, sorry, half inch or one inch. So I came inward by half an inch. And after that, I'm going to go ahead and mark one quarter of my waist measurement. That is after the half inch that I've marked. After the half inch that I've marked, I will mark one quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for that. Mark one quarter of your waist measurement plus one inch for that. So you go ahead and connect from the waist to the hip. So sorry, I've already gone ahead to connect from the waist to the hip. So you know what I did? I came in what by half an inch and then mark one quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for that. Sorry, my head is kind of covering it. And from that point, I connected a straight line to the hip. And from the crouch, I went upward up by a one inch. Did you see? And then I'll go ahead and connect did you see so you're gonna connect from the crouch to the hip line like this with your curve ruler you connect from your crouch or the hip um to the hip line and then you also want to go ahead and connect from that hip line to the waistline that half half inch that you came in what with or that you marked on your waistline you want to you know go ahead and connect to that point you can use one inch if you want you can come in word by one inch instead of half inch depending if you want so it's fine so you want to go ahead and connect and then try to blend your crouch did you see try to blend your your the crouch uh, line so the next thing is to get the midpoint of my waist and then i'll come down by 4.5 inches for my dart and then I'll mark half inch on both sides and connect my dart sorry my head was kind of covering what I was doing I didn't know about that I'm so sorry about it so I haven't connected the 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 dots now this is what i have i hope you are cleared on what i did here so if you are not cleared you can you know you know ask me a question because this is a john suit so i'm not going to be doing that curved waist where you come down by half inch and raise the other side by half an inch this is a jumpsuit so i'm not gonna be doing that if it were to be a trouser i would have done that but because this is a trouser a jumpsuit pants 
so i'm not going to be doing that so the next thing is on your crouch measurement get the midpoint of your crouch from the crouch extension to the crouch measurement sorry my head is covering it you get the midpoint did you see from the crouch extension to the crouch you get the midpoint and you start marking that midpoint so that midpoint is very necessary for you to be able to determine where your knee and your ankle measurement is going to be so you connect to the down part and then use your stretch ruler to connect So after you are done connecting, this is what you are going to have. So the next thing is to get your, your knee circumference. Sorry, my, yes, my knee circumference is 17 inches. But for, for the purpose of this story, I'm going to be making use of 20 inches because the, it's going to be free. The knee circumference is supposed to be free. So if you're making a fitted pant, you can use your exact knee. But I added 3 inches to my knee, making it 20 inches. 20 inches divided by 2 is going to give me 10. So I'm supposed to mark 10 inches on the on this part. But I'm going to keep the five uh, midpoint of 10 inches on the straight line. So meaning my half 5 inch, which is the midpoint of 10 inches, will be on the straight line. Did you see? So I mark 5 inches on this side and 5 inches on the other side, making it 10 inches. So you're going to keep your curve ruler like this. Keep your curve ruler like this and connect from the crouch to the knee. Hope you are, you are cleared on what I did. So my crouch is 20 divided by 2 gave me 10 inches. So I'm supposed to mark 10 inches on my knee. So that 10 inches, the uh, half of 10 inches is 5 inches. So the 5 inches, I placed it on the midpoint. So one side of the crouch is 5, um, one side of the the knee is 5 inches, the other side is 5 inches. Keep your, your curve like this and connect from the crouch to the knee like this did you did you see that so on your on your ankle now you are also going to divide your ankle by two but i'm going to be making use of the the knee measurement so what i have on the knee i'm bringing it to the ankle this is because the pants you are working with or the jumpsuit you are working with is that is a bit free so whatever i have on my knee is what i'm also going to mark on my ankle and with a stretch ruler i'm going to connect i use a curve ruler to connect from the crouch to the knee but from the knee to the ankle i'm using a stretch ruler so what i'm also marking on the knee is the 20 uh, the 10 inches i marked on the what i'm marking on the ankle is the 10 inches i marked on the knee Please take note of that. But if you are making a fitted pant or pants pant, you are going to be adding your actual ankle measurement on your ankle and your actual knee measurement on your knee. So with this now, the front pattern is ready. I believe you understood to this very point. If you are a new person, you are a beginner, you have not seen trouser before, you might need to rewatch this video to avoid, you know, confusion the trouser pattern is a very simple and detailed pattern so you want to go ahead and extend all the lines to the other side so we'll be able to draft the back part now did you see i've extended my hip crouch knee and ankle line towards the other side to draft the back part so the next thing you want to do is on your crouch line you mark half of a one quarter of your hip on your crouch line mark one quarter of your hip which is 9.5 and then mark your crouch extension which is 3.8 my 3.8 falls on this point that is a line before the four inches so i'll mark i marked one quarter of my hip 9.5 and the crouch uh, extension which is here it almost touched the front crouch extension did you see that so you're going to be making use of a big uh, pattern paper or add to it so you'll be able to you know get this did you see that so on my hip line i will mark one quarter of my hip measurement and i will add one inch for ease so the back um trouser pattern is is actually bigger than the front so on the on the back i mark one quarter of my hip plus one inch 
for ease so what i mark on the hip line i also mark on the waistline and i connected with a straight line and with my curve ruler i'm gonna connect from the crouch extension to the hip line did you see i'm gonna connect from the crouch extension to the hip line but for the crouch extension for the back you want to come down by half an inch this is because the crouch extension is usually lower for the back than the front so wherever your crouch extension falls come down by half an inch and then from that point you want to connect your crouch to the hip measurement did you see that that is very easy and simple i believe you understood that point did you see so i've connected my crouch to the hip line and this is what i have so on the hip line i added extra one inch for ease and that is what i connect marked on the hip and also on the waist so at this point i didn't know my camera cut off when i was you know marking this so i used a brook marker to remark this point and the next thing that i did is that on the waistline i went inward by 1.5 inches and with my ruler i connected from the hip to that 1.5 inches and i extended it out so that was what i did i went inward on the waist by 1.5 inches and i used a straight ruler to connect from the hip to the 1.5 inches that i made and then i extended it out so that is basically what i did um Oh, that is what my camera did not capture sorry about that so i'm also going to raise this up by 1.5 inches remember i went inward by 1.5 inches i will raise this by 1.5 inches and i'm going to keep my tape in a diagonal form like this and mark one quarter of my waist plus one inch for that and it's going to give me 7.5 inches wherever that 7.5 inches touches the waistline that becomes my measurement so you keep your tape in this diagonal form and mark one quarter of your waist plus one inch for that wherever it falls on the waistline becomes your measurement so you're going to draw a straight line like this to meet that point i believe you are cleared so i raised this pattern up by 1.5 inches because the back pattern is big, bigger because of the butt so your butt will sit perfectly well if you have a very big butt like a um, very big uh, hip like 45 and above you can extend by two inches you can extend it out by two inches you can even go inward by two inches and extend it out by two inches but if you have a uh, the hip of 40 inches 30 something 42 you can use one point you can go inward by 1.5 inches and raise it up by 1.5 inches so i believe you understood to this point so i'm going to measure from my crouch to the crouch extension measure from your crouch to the crouch extension and get the midpoint of that crouch extension get the midpoint of that crouch and then you are going to mark it till you get to the hem part you are going to mark it till you get to the hem part just like we did for the front so after i'm done marking this is what i have so the next thing is to mark my my uh knee circumference which is half of it is 20, 10 inches you're gonna mark five inch on both side did you see five inch on this side and five inch on the other side and then you're gonna add half inch on both sides did you see i added extra half inch so the back trouser pant is bigger than the front please take note of that you can see i didn't have that i didn't add that half inch on the front on the front but i'm adding on the back after marking my knee measurement i added extra half inch on both sides of the knee extra half inch this is not the sewing allowance this is the ease and it's added only on the back because the back is bigger than the front and whatever you have on the knee you also transfer on the hem parts did you see because our trouser pattern is a bit wide on the hem part so you are going to transfer whatever you have on the knee to the hem part but if you're working with a fitted pant you are going to mark one quarter your half of your ankle measurement and also add a half inch on both sides but what i have on the knee i just brought it to the hem part and this is what i have 
did you see making a trouser pant is very easy trust me on this this is very easy and if you're a beginner you might need to rewatch so you will not get confused so the last thing is to get my the midpoint of my waistline and that is where my dart is going to be and i'm going to come down by five inches mark half inch on both sides and connect my dart So I will go ahead and add half inch. The half inch I'm adding is the sewing allowance for the upper part. Like I said earlier in my video, if you would love me to do a detailed tutorial on how to take a trouser and jumpsuit measurement, please leave a comment for me in the comment section and I will certainly do a video about that. So with this, I'm done with the trouser parts now so i'll go ahead and draft the upper part and the sleeve part did you see that i will draft the upper part and the sleeve part i hope you are not confused so i'm going to close i'm going to you know fold in the hem part of this trouser for me to be able to cut it out fold in the hem part and then go ahead and cut your trouser pattern So to get started with the upper part, I will start by getting the bishop sleeve. The sleeve we are working with for this jumpsuit is called the bishop sleeve. And this is my long sleeve pattern. As you can see, I marked the bicep line and the, mid, mid, uh, the middle point. So I have made a video on how to make a long sleeve pattern before on this channel. You can go watch the video. So I don't want the video to be too long. So that is why I... Do not you know draft the sleeve pattern on this video so you can watch it so you want to go ahead and divide divide this part into three and the other side into three as well on the hem part you want to also divide it into three whatever you have as the measurement you divide it into three so we're gonna go ahead and slit this open so as you are opening this make sure you don't get to the bicep line don't cut it to get to the bicep line so when you are done this is what you are going to have on the middle line now you want to like you know or cut it through so you get to the end point like this did you see what i did you want to cut it through to the you get to the end point and you also want to cut it through till you get to the end point of the other side so did you see what i have so i'm going to now take it to the another pattern paper so this pattern paper i'm working with is a bit small so if you have a bigger one you can use depending on how big you want the sleeve to be so make sure the middle line is on the midpoint of the pattern paper the middle line is on the midpoint of the pattern paper then you want to like go ahead and you know try to spread it apart to add more fullness to it so that's how to get a bishop sleeve so you can do what you want you can do anything you want to get your bishop sleeve you can you can you know spread it apart beyond this now you can spread it apart beyond this so I'm trying to like arrange to get what I want for my bishop sleeve. So I've already gotten what I want. So I'm going to use my masking tape to hold it like this. And in between the down part, I have it as 3, 3 inches. Did you see? Just use your pin and hold it. So on the, mid, on the middle part, I have it as 6 inches. But in between the other pattern, uh, I have it as 3, 3 inches. And you, and you can see I extended out... Uh, a pattern so it to be able to accommodate you can see that some some part of the the pattern was already longer than the main pattern so i have to like add an extension to the damp part so I'll be, I'll be able to get the sleeve perfectly well did you see that so you want to like go ahead and make a curve 
So you want to go ahead and make a curve on the down part like this. So that is how to mark your bishop's sleeve. So your bishop's sleeve can be bigger than this, depending on the fabric you are working with. So for this jumpsuit, I used to be in cheese, so I didn't want the sleeve to be more than this so that my fabric will be enough. Did you see? So you want to go ahead and cut out your pattern. So after I'm done cutting, this is what I have. So I'll go ahead and remove this uh, slash and spread pattern so we can have our bishop sleeve pattern. So this is what we have. Did you see that? So this is what we have after we are done. So this is our bishop sleeve pattern. So I can go ahead and do the pattern drafting for the main bodies. So for this pattern drafting, I folded my pattern into two because we're going to be cutting asymmetric. So I need the pattern to be unfold. So the pattern is unfold and I've marked my starting point line. From the starting point line, which is the shoulder line, I will mark shoulder to the chest line 8.5 inches, shoulder to the waist, um, the boss point, which is 9.5 and shoulder to the waist line which is 15.5 inches and I'm going to go ahead and roll a straight line. After marking the line, this is what I have. So from the starting point line, mark half of your shoulder and on the chest line, mark half of your shoulder measurement. So come down by 1.5 inches, which is your shoulder slope, and then connect your armhole. So I'm going to be a bit fast. So on the neckline, I will mark 2 inches. The neck, the neckline I want to use is 2 inches, so I'll go ahead and connect my shoulder slope. I'll be a bit fast in this video because I believe we all know how to draft our basic bodies pattern. So if you don't know, you can watch my video on how to do so because I'm going to be a bit fast on this video. This video is already long. So for the neck depth, I came down by 2.5 inches and I'll go ahead and connect. So this is my neck depth. So on the chest line, you want to mark one quarter of your bust circumference. Go up by 3 inches and go inward by 0 0.75 inch. Mark one quarter of your bust measurement and then go up by 3 inches and go inward by 0 0.75 inch. On the waistline, you mark one quarter of your waist measurement plus 1.5 inches for your dart and then you go ahead and connect. Did you see that? With this, we are done with the front part now. So then I'll go ahead and mark my dart of 1.5 inches. So you mark half of your nipple to nipple measurement, mark 0 0.75 inch on both sides. Then from the boss point line, you come down by one inch and then connect your darts. So this is what I have after I was done with the front. So I'm going to transfer that to the back. I'm going to use my Tracing width to transfer that to the back. So the next thing on the to transfer that to the other side of the pattern, sorry. So the next thing is to mark the back part. You can see I've marked one inch for my zipper allowance. I've marked my starting point. Then I marked my shoulder to the chest line and shoulder to the waistline, which is 15 inches. The same shoulder to the waistline I'm using for the front is what I use for the back. So on the starting point, mark half of your shoulder measurement. Come down by one inch for your shoulder slope and then connect your armhole. Go uh, mark two inches as your neck width. Did you see that? And neck depth of one inch and then go ahead and connect. Did you see? And then go ahead and extend to the zipper side. This is very easy to make on the bust line. You mark one quarter of your bust measurement. Get get the midpoint of the armhole go inward by half an inch and connect your armhole this is very easy and simple so you can see on the the waistline you go inward by one inch did you see to eliminate the zipper bulging effect to eliminate the zipper bulging effect then you want to go ahead and mark one quarter of your waist measurement one inch for that zipper bulge uh this that that you took and then one inch for that so you replace one inch for that uh, mark that you made on your center front or center back sorry 
and then you go ahead and mark your dart of one inch so i'm using the same pattern the same length of uh, waist that i use for the front so but what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be shortening the back parts by one inch this is so that to avoid a zipper bulge i'm going to be shortening it by one inch so i'll go ahead and transfer this to the other side of the pattern so after transferring to the other side of the pattern this is what i have this is the front part now and this is the back part as you can see so i'll go ahead and close the zipper did you see i'll go ahead and close the zipper for the back after the asymmetric uh, neckline i will go ahead i will open it up so i'm closing the zipper so that i'll be able to you know mark out the asymmetric neckline so after that i'll go ahead and cut this pattern out like i'll go ahead and cut out the excess you know the parts we are not using so as you can see i've done that already did you see so i've cut this pattern out so i'm gonna be um, doing the asymmetric so you want to do get the asymmetric get one side of the shoulder of the front and the back of the part you want the asymmetric to be mash up the front shoulder to the back shoulder just like what you see me doing and use your seat tape and hold it the front shoulder and the back shoulder mash it up on one side where you want the asymmetric to be and then from the tip here of the armhole i will come down by 3.5 inches you can come down by four inches you can come down by five but for me i'm going to be coming down by 3.5 inches i don't want it to be off and on the front as well i'm also going to come down by 3.5 inches so for the back i came down by 3.5 inches for the front i came down by 3.5 inches also and from the neckline i'm going to trace to meet the the asymmetric uh, the, to meet the that point did you see you want to go ahead and trace like this then i'll just use my marker pen to lighten it did you see so you can make your asymmetric to be more than this so you try to blend it you can make it more revealing like this yeah more than this you can come down by four five you can you know as, extend the the wideness of the neckline but this is what i want so that part that is shaded will be cut off so you on the sleeve you get the midpoint of the sleeve and then you also come down on one side by 3.5 inches and also on the other side by 3.5 inches and on the middle the mid the middle point um, i came down by 3.5 inches and i will call i will curve it out so if you want to cut out the asymmetric sleeve you are going to be cutting off this part but before then i will use the sleeve and cut the main pattern the main sleeve pattern before cutting out the asymmetric sleeve pattern then you want to go ahead and cut this out so you can decide to alter this more than this so i don't want mine to be more revealing and i feel it's better like this but if you want yours to be more revealing you can cut it beyond the measurement i used so by the time i mash this up i found out that the back is higher and the reason is because the shoulder slope for the back was 1.5 1, why the front was the shoulder slope for the back was one inch why the front was 1.5 so when you mash it up you try to like cut off the part that is longer so it mashes up with the other side so this is what i have so you can also try to like reduce from the sleeve the where the back is gonna be so did you see so this is what i have after i was done so i'll go ahead and remove all the pins did you see that go ahead and remove all the pins then go ahead and cut out the back's uh, um, zipper the parts we don't need on our back zipper so by the time you, you you add your zipper to the back everything will align together so this is what we have so far did you see this is very easy and simple to make so this is the trouser part as you can see this is the trouser part so the next thing is for the back part so for your zipper to lay down flat you want to cut off one inch from the center back that is towards the zipper side go up by one inch and then mark a diagonal line like this to meet the end of your your your, your top did you see so you are cutting off that part because we don't need it this is going to make our zipper to relax without having any zipper bulge 
So we have come to the end of the class and in my next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to sew it. It's going to be a well detailed tutorial on sewing. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. See you in my next tutorial. Bye.